Today in the show, we're going to talk a little about manganese. It's an important micronutrient that every one of your crops absolutely has to have. Well, again, here's another micronutrient that on many soil tests we don't see it even measured. So make sure if you're pulling soil analysis on your farm, get a complete test where you have the essential micronutrients like manganese on the test too. It's one that we're going to look at in addition to how does it compare to the other micros, for example, iron. We want to see the iron at just a little bit higher level than manganese. We don't want manganese to get higher than iron. That's one of those ratios that we'll look at on soil tests. Around the United States and in Canada as well, we see two common testing methods. It's either the Malik 3 or the DTPA test for micronutrients. Well, with most nutrients, it kind of correlates. So there is some type of ratio you can look at. So we say, all right, if it's this on the DTPA, it's probably roughly this on the Malik 3. That all works fine except for one nutrient, manganese. The problem with manganese is, especially as that soil pH goes higher, the manganese level on the DTPA test goes lower. On the Malik 3 test, it doesn't appear that way to us at least. So we still see the manganese level, if it's truly there in the soil, regardless of the pH, it's going to show up in the Malik 3. So we very often will call the Malik 3 what's in the soil. For manganese and with the DTPA we look at more of well that should be available and it might even be a little more than that but we don't know for sure so with most soil test numbers we say yep it's this let's fertilize to this we feel really good about this yield and we're good but with manganese if you're getting a DTPA test I honestly can't say that exactly what I would prefer you to do is get a Malik 3 test just for manganese and a DTPA test just for manganese, and then let's compare the two. If both are really low, well now you absolutely have to apply manganese to your soil. If one is high, like the Malik 3 is high and your DTPA is really low, well if you get the pH down and you get some microbials going in your soil, maybe that manganese comes available and you don't have to worry about actually fertilizing with manganese. And specifically to that pH, I think on our farm when we get down in that 6.2, 6.3 range and lower, we see more manganese show up in our DTPA test. That's what Brian was talking about. And one of the places that it really plays out is in disease prevention, like white mold, for example, where high levels of manganese are available to the crop. We typically see no white mold or less white mold than in areas of the field where we don't have good manganese availability. Now, that may have something to do with soil pH as well, because typically in lower poorly drained soils, we see more white mold and we have higher pH too. The other spot where manganese is tremendously important is emergence. So if you do have a soil that's a little low on manganese, yes, you can go apply manganese sulfate as a broadcast if you would like to do it. But you could also put some manganese on with the planter. Now, manganese is not exactly like boron where you have to really be concerned about getting too much in one area and it being toxic. You can put a fair amount of manganese out there. But many times what we'll do with our planter is we might put a quart or two quarts of manganese chelate there to help get that plant off to a real good start. Manganese is another great example of nutrients that most farmers aren't even applying to their fields. So if you haven't been applying manganese, you can look at the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app and see how much manganese each of your crops is taking out of the soil. If you're taking a little bit out every year and never putting any back, it makes a lot of sense that you may see a return on investment replenishing your soil with some of those nutrients like manganese. And there are a lot of different manganese products out in the market. We see many blends of micros where we've got three, four, five different micronutrients in the product, putting micros out at low levels. And most of the time farmers are banding that along the row as they plant. One last thing that I've got here is Roundup and manganese. So back a few years ago, there were some people talking about Oh, if you put Roundup on, it's going to tie up all your manganese in the soil and in the crop. That's ridiculous. We have never found that to be true when we have applied unbelievably huge, massive rates, so much that I can't tell you how much we put on. But trust me, we put on enough for 10 lifetimes and we still saw no difference in the soil with manganese. We saw no difference in the plant with manganese. What it really comes back to is, People are just short on manganese around the country and around the world because most people are simply not applying it. And when you start removing crops year after year after year, you're taking manganese off every year. Manganese is somewhat mobile in the soil. So think about nitrogen. If you didn't put any nitrogen on for the next 10 years, 
of course you're going to have horrible yields. If you did the same thing with sulfur or boron, any of these leachables, that's the way it's going to be. Well, manganese doesn't leach as fast, but it does move out through that soil profile. So what I'm saying here is if you haven't put on manganese in the last few years, you need to. And it's not the fault of Roundup why your crop is short on manganese. It's the fault that you haven't fertilized with it. And if you haven't been fertilizing with manganese, we'd recommend do some trial work on your own farm. Start with one field, put some manganese on part of the field and don't put it on the other or try some various rates out there to learn what works in your soil and in your crop rotation. Yeah, and we're not saying you have to use a whole crazy amount of manganese, but spend $2, spend $5, something like that on manganese. It will pay in a lot of cases if you haven't been fertilizing with manganese over the last few years. One other thing that always pays on farms is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show.